Now, each day of this year's event here on Cybos TV, we're speaking to leading financial journalists and getting their take on what we've seen across the schedule of sessions. Now, all of it is, of course, content you shouldn't miss. But what from yesterday's agenda has caught the eye of our experts? Well, today, those experts are Paul Hindle, editor of Fintech Futures, and we're joined once again by Heather McKenzie, reporter for Cybos Issues. Welcome both to Cybos TV. Hi. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Um, now, let's start with yesterday's panel session, where there was one on climate change. Both of you watched the session, I believe, and I, Paul, Paul, I'd like to first come to you. What did you make of it? Um, I thought it was a really interesting discussion. I mean, climate change obviously is, is an issue that's impacting uh, us all right now, um, and it's only going to be felt more if, if nothing's done about it. So given the size and the criticality of the, the finance industry, when it comes to how the world works, um, it's great to see uh, issues like this being discussed um, kind of like front and centre at these kind of like conferences. Um, you know, there's a few really good ideas um, floating around in there. I think um, the, the key one for me, the, the idea that banks and financial institutions should look to create more standardised ways to, to track and report on their emissions um, and bringing in sustainability initiatives and, and disclosure agreements just to make sure that um, everyone is on the, the same kind of like level and in, in sync in terms of the data that's being collected and reported on um, so that firms can then more accurately uh, see how they rank among other businesses and then they can really be held accountable for the results that they're getting in terms of um, their, their, their ESG initiatives. Um, a couple of really good um, ideas kind of like going around as well with uh, like carbon tokens, um, quotas to keep an eye on, on carbon emissions, um, setting standardised science-based targets, blended finance, things like this started to come up, which I think are really good. Um, and green bond markets as well to encourage companies seeking funding to ensure that they have proper ESG processes in place um, and ensuring that disruptive technologies get the funding that they need. Um, and I think Amy West of, of TV Securities really finished it off well by highlighting the importance as well of engaging with um, clients who represent some of the biggest sources of emissions to promote better processes with them and encourage uh, mature corporations to, to alter their business models to, to, to really kind of like follow this through. So um, all in all, I thought it was a really interesting discussion. Um, really now, for, for me, I'd like to see some action uh, being taken as well. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's great kind of like having the talk, um, but really we need to see uh, actions being done and some of these things followed through. Well said, Paul. Thank you. And Heather, you also tuned into that session. Uh, what role do you think there is for banks in t tackling climate change? Um, yes, uh, thanks. I also saw um, Noel Quinn uh, on the opening day uh, meant, talked about climate change as well, Noel Quinn from HSBC, um, saying that these, these transitions to, to net zero um, greenhouse gas emissions uh, by companies would require significant funding. So he expects to see a lot of action over the next um, 10 to 15 years. And obviously banks can, can help with this. Um, the One of the points that was also made in the panel itself was about um, it, it's not a solution to, to sort of defund or to, to come out of um, uh, you know, the large sort of dirty companies, the, the big carbon intensive companies, because that would just, um, that wouldn't really be removing um, the uh, carbon from the atmosphere. So banks see themselves as having a role of um, advising uh, these companies on their transition and helping them to transition, helping them to go to new technologies and um, new business models. Uh, another interesting point was made by Abbott Kamali of, of Bank of America. Um, he said that he had noticed the quality of dialogue between the companies and their C-suites, investors, financial institutions, intermediaries and advisors. Um, the quality of those conversations had, had vastly improved. And he said that companies can no longer get away with, with sort of superficial climate strategies. Um, there has to be a lot of detail. And there's also been a lot of um, shareholder sort of activism. So, so the role of investors and also just everyday people like us who can put pressure on companies and, and make sure that these transitions are made. So that, those were interesting points as well, I thought. And Heather, on your point about technology, um, Paul, you also watched a session about deploying AI at scale. Tell us what you took away from that session. Yeah, I thought it was, um, again, a, another really good discussion. I mean, um, AI for me, um, 
has really been kind of like growing uh, along with the uh, mass of data that's coming into banks. So when it comes to, I know sometimes when people think of AI, they might think of things like um, Skynet. So it might not be the most glamorous kind of like thing. When it, but I think data reconciliation um, really for, for AI, uh, AI has, has been the, the real key. So allowing banks and, and, and FIs to kind of like collect that data and glean really accurate and insightful information from that data, I, I think is where it really where it's been coming into its own. Um, the discussion yesterday covered some really good points, I think, around um, using AI for customer relationship management, um, predictive uh, analytics for customers to, to kind of like get uh, ideas of what their customers are doing and then um, improve um, what, what they're offering to their customers as well. Um, fraud and anomaly detection when it comes to cross-border transactions or any kind of like transactions is, is a key one in terms of um, really tackling those uh, anti-money laundering um, areas. Um, Making sure that banks can avoid kind of like fines and stuff like that, um, and then getting intent out of documents. One of the one of the really interesting things I thought um, that came up in the panel yesterday was discussion about extracting information not only from from documents but also from from speech and, and calls and uh, semantics and speech mm -hmm. patterns and things like that. I thought it's a, it a really kind of like interesting um, way that that's going to go. So. Um, Panel yesterday again, um, a, a reveal, a swift Deutsche Bank, Associate General and, and C3 announcing they're going to be collaborating on a new AI platform as well to, to really work together to detect fraud patterns um, and, uh, across uh, cross-border transactions and transactions across the business world, which I think is going to be um, really interesting to see how that uh, works out. Um, C3's uh, Tom Seibel was, was quick to point out the benefits of sharing um, AI and, and machine learning models between banks as well to make sure that, um, you know, everyone is, is kind of like working to um to tackle this together really because i mean he, he he mentioned that there's no it gives nobody a competitive advantage here we're basically just all working together to, to tackle bad actors and, and you know if everybody's sharing these models around then then it, it just works to benefit everybody the only people that are losing out are, are these the fraudsters essentially so that was a really interesting point um and then look into the future um you know uh, one of the key things i thought that they mentioned as well is uh, again to avoid that kind of like skynet scenario keeping humans in the loop um I I thought was uh, really interesting as well and making sure that AI is being used to, to inform humans to accelerate processes rather than working to, to, to make Brilliant. decisions itself so that we can make yeah. sure that it's being used ethically as well. So I think that's uh, really interesting to see where that Brilliant. goes. Brilliant. Paul and Heather, thank you so much for joining Cybos TV. And Heather, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow as well.